Uh, Blue Buck Beer. Don't ask me why, guys. I saw it at the store and thought, hey, I never tried that beer before. Let's try it out. It's actually really good beer, guys. So, I just published a video a few months ago on how to unflood your chainsaw using no tools. No tools. If you guys want to check that video out, I have a clickable thumbnail at the end of this video that you can click on and, and see that video if you want to see that. On that video, I got so many comments with guys saying, well, just pull your spark plug out and do this and that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down, but I'm not Superman. How am I supposed to pull the spark plug out using no tools? That wasn't the point of that video, you guys. However, it did make me realize that I do need to make this video now on showing you guys how to do this technically the proper way if you do have access to your tools. Hey guys, welcome back to Steve Small and the Saloon again. I got a little link up here for you in the information button if you want to get back to my website, stevesmallandysaloon.com. Check that out when you get a chance if you want to. Um, I know you guys are going to go be getting, get to the point, get to the point. I do got to take you through a couple things here really quickly before I get to the point though. Um, first of all, what is a flooded chainsaw? A lot of people out there don't know what that even means, so I got to take you through that. Flooded a flooded engine simply means that there is too much fuel in the engine. The carburetor mixes a, a, a portion of fuel and air together and puts that in your engine so the spark plug can fire that mixture and it will explode in there and it will ignite properly. If you have too much fuel in your engine, the spark plug cannot ignite that pure fuel in most cases. So that's what flooded is. Too much fuel in your engine. Now, the other thing is, why? Why is my um, chainsaw flooded in the first place? I can think of right off the top of my head, uh, three most common reasons that it would be flooded. Uh, the first one is from over choking. Over choking means that uh, you, start, you go to start your chainsaw and you have it on choke and you just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and it, every time you pull it on choke, it's firing more fuel and more fuel and more fuel in that engine. Now it's flooded. It's not going to start. Uh, the second one is sometimes you choke it when it doesn't need to be choked. Like, uh, for instance, if you are using your chainsaw and you, start, and you start it and run it and then you put it down for 30, 60 seconds and then go to restart it again and you choke it again to restart it, it's already warmed up. It doesn't need to be choked, so you're choking it maybe when it doesn't need to be choked. The other reason is that I can think of is that there's an actual problem with your carburetor itself. Um, sometimes you'll just go put it on the shelf and it'll sit there overnight and it'll flood itself if there's something wrong with that carburetor. I do have a, a link on my description of this video to take you back to some uh, parts and stuff to. To, to address that situation if you want as well as at the end of this video again I got another clickable thumbnail there for you take you back to another video that I have it's called uh, how to rebuild a carburetor something like that it'll take you to through a, a really common problem that's inside the carburetor on that check that one out when you get a chance to so first thing that I did because now we know we have our tool handy here I took the bar and chain off Way easier to do this and it's safer if you take your bar and chain off. Why not? We got our tool sitting here anyways. Now, first thing we got to do after that is take the spark plug out. All right, I'm getting that spark plug out right now. Now have a look at that spark plug right there. That spark plug should be dry. That is completely soaked, wet to the look. Now we take our little flashlight, look right down that spark plug hole, turn your engine over until the piston comes up to the top. The top of that piston 
is completely wet. It should be dry also. I can't really get my camera in there to show you guys that. It doesn't really work in there, but just take my word for it. The top of that piston is wet. This chainsaw is flooded. Now what do we do? We have to get the excess fuel that's in the engine. We have to get that out somehow. So how do we do that? We flip it upside down and we pull the rope to blow all the gasoline, the excess fuel out that spark plug hole to dry it out as best we can. Now, before we do that though, I got to take you through a couple things. Make sure that when you're doing that, that your spark plug is not stuck in the boot. It could ground itself out. You're shooting raw fuel out of there. The spark plug sparking. You're going to burn your house down. You're going to light yourself on fire. So make sure that that spark plug is not in the boot. Put that spark plug aside. The other thing we want to do is turn the switch off. Put the switch in the off position. Now, I, I do understand there are some chainsaws out there that uh, have a what I call a momentary toggle switch on them, an on-off switch, where when you shut your chainsaw off, you hold the lever down, it shuts it off, and then when you let it go, it automatically goes back to the on position. Not much you can really do with that, but if you do have a dedicated on-off switch, make sure it's in the off position. Now, we are going to flip that upside down. I'm going to get a little rag here just in case some fuel actually does pour out of there, depending on how badly your chainsaw is flooded, you could, uh, you could just do that sometimes, and you'll see fuel pouring out the hole just by doing that. So put a little rag down or something like that, and uh, switches off, and there's no spark plug in there. Start pulling that rope over like that, upside down, just in case there's fuel also in the bottom of your crankcase, that's why we're doing this upside down. Keep pulling it over, and dry that out as best as you can. Now, if you do have access to an air compressor with a little gun on it like that, after you do that, you can put that uh, air compressor just in the hole slightly, not all the way in so it's hitting the piston or something like that, and just blow that air in there as you're pulling it over. Wear eye protection when you're doing that. You're gonna be shooting raw fuel right out of there, possibly. And uh, that's gonna dry that out a lot. Now, we move on to the spark plug. While you got your air compressor in your hand, dry that spark plug off, best as you can. If you're not using an air compressor or something like that, um, um, Bic lighter. Warm that spark plug up, make it dry. Blow on it, that's good enough. As long as there's no droplets of gasoline on that spark plug, you're good to go. Put that spark plug back in, we're almost there. Okay, and get that spark plug boot back on there. Now, we're ready to start this thing and see if it's actually gonna work. Um, I'm gonna say to you guys, start it like normal. Start it as you usually start a chainsaw. Um, because I know the owner's manuals and stuff out there say put it on the ground, either put your foot through here to hold it down, put your knee on it, however they're telling you to do it. That's not what this video is about either. I'm not getting into that. Start it like you normally do with two exceptions. Don't put your choke on. Make sure it's just in only the run position because you don't need to choke it anymore. It's already got enough fuel in there to run. And the other thing is, hold that trigger wide open. Get a lot more air flowing through there to, to, to blow that out as good as it can. I'm not even going to bother taking this outside right now. I am just going to uh, start it right here. I'm just going to start it real briefly and then shut it off just to see if this works. All right, choke is off. It's in the run position. I'm going to hold that trigger wide open. Let's see what happens. What was that? Three pulls. By the way, with the chain brake right there, if you do still have your bar and chain on that, before you start it, make sure that chain brake's on. Safety always. That's my number one priority. 
So there you go, guys. I really hope I helped you guys out again. I hope I saved you some money. You didn't have to take it into a repair shop and get them to do a full tune-up on it because it didn't need a tune-up. It was just simply flooded. Give me that thumbs up button, guys. I really appreciate that. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Share this video with your friends. And uh, put some comments down. I'd really like you to put some comments down. Let me know what you thought of this video. That would be awesome too. Remember those clickable uh, thumbnails are coming up right now for you to get back to those other videos I was talking about. And until then, Blue Buck Beer, Steve out.